Members of the Executive Committee of the Temple of Understanding, gentlemen and ladies and dear friends, it's a very joyous occasion for all of us of the Temple of Understanding and the Walk of Hope, which has become a movement in our country. So on the occasion of the Silver Jubilee of the Temple of Understanding and the Dr. Karan Singh Interfaith Harmony Award celebration, we are truly beholden to all the friends who are assembled here for this joyous and happy occasion. The Temple of Understanding was inspired by an ordinary housewife, Miss Juliet Hollister. And it's now more than 50 years, 1960, it was established. And in India, we have been truly inspired and led in the work of the interfaith movement by someone no other than Dr. Karan Singh, whom I believe, and many of us believe, is a philosopher statesman par excellence. Sir, we are grateful to you for having guided this organization for all these decades. So the timing, <laughs> the timing of our celebration coincides with this marathon march of 7,000 plus kilometers undertaken by Sri M to promote national integration and strengthen the bonds of cultural and spiritual unity among fellow citizens. It is truly a wonderful moment. So as the founder of the Manavekta mission, he has inspired this Padyatra for peace and harmony, starting from Kanyakumari on the 12th of January 2050. So, and it was again uh, Dr. Karan Singh and also a galaxy of ministers, both from the union government and the state of Kerala, also from Tamil Nadu, who were assembled there, who collectively, led by Dr. Karan Singh, flagged off the march. And it coincided with Swami Vivekananda's birth anniversary. And it has covered the length and breadth of the country, passing through 11 states, bringing together citizens from all walks of life, traversing the varied landscape of India. Truly, this extraordinary service to the nation, coupled with many decades of selfless service, merits the highest gratitude of all citizens cutting across all religions, social, political identities, and what have you. For we are all the fruits of one tree of humanity and the leaves of one branch of myriad shapes and sizes and of course, abundant fragrances. So for the occasion, we are thankful that we have scintillating documentaries that will be screening. They are short documentaries, eight, nine minutes, or maximum 10 minutes. So I'll request uh, my colleague and good friend, Mr. Raja Chaudhary, to please take over. In 1993, there was the Columbian Exposition in Chicago to celebrate uh, the 400th anniversary of Columbus's landing in America. As part of that, there was uh, this Parliament of World Religion. And that brought together five or six thousand people from around the world in every denomination. And there, Swami Vivekananda, he, he appeared there 
and he made a tremendous impact. I mean, his, for one thing, his personality, his voice, and what he said when he got up and said, "Brothers and sisters of America," you know, the whole hall erupted, and then he was the most sought-after person in that. So that really began the interfaith movement. Now, from then onwards, in the 20th century, a large number of interfaith organizations came into being. One of them. Was the Temple of Understanding, founded by a remarkable American woman called Juliet Hollister, in 1960. She started having these interfaith conferences around the world, and she happened to come to Calcutta once and to Bombay, where I met her, and she immediately, as it were, uh, involved me in the in the Temple of Understanding. So I became interested and gradually became closer and closer to it until I. Ended up by becoming chairman of the Temple of Understanding uh, International. I am still the international chair. Mission of the Temple of Understanding was to bring together people of different religious uh, denominations, different religions, in a harmonious dialogue. It was about trying to get people to understand uh, the basics of each other's religions and to realize that there are multiple paths to the divine. That is the basic. Uh, As you know, our Indian mantra, "Ekam Sat Vipraha Bahuda Vidanti." The truth is one; the wise call it by many names. In other words, the acceptance that there are multiple paths to the divine. No one religion can claim the exclusive monopoly of the divine. India has a very special ambiance as far as the interfaith movement is concerned. In India, all the eight or nine world religions have flourished. We have four religions were born in India: Hinduism, Jainism, Buddhism, and Sikhism. Then four religions came to us from uh, West Asia. Uh, Christianity came here in AD 57, almost uh, very soon after Jesus himself. The Zarathustrians came here. When they fled from Persia, now they are the Parsis. Uh, Judaism came here. They, uh, this is the only country, uh, perhaps, that has never ever persecuted the Jews. And Islam came here in two incarnations. They came as iconoclasts and invaders, but they came also as Sufis. The great Sufi saints came here, and there are the Baha'i faith, which is comparatively recent, came has also come in, is now recognized as uh, a religion. India can and should become a beacon for the whole world um, by the very fact that it practices uh, an acceptance of all the great religious traditions that flourish here. Temple of Understanding India can help to change that by organizing these sort of functions, by uh, collaborating with organizations that are already doing this sort of thing. Although we cannot do it ourselves all the time, we do collaborate with like-minded organizations, and there are many around the country, to try and see whether we cannot get a critical mass of public opinion to realize the significance of this movement. How do young people begin? to understand the significance of the interfaith movement or of our multi-faith traditions what we need to do without teaching religion we can we can have what we call value oriented education including these interfaith values which are essential even unesco has come up with a kit with regard to value based uh, education and and in this process of trying to uh, widen and strengthen the interfaith movement we intend to use In the web we intend to use uh, videos the media the films if possible on 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 interface 
taking each religion and then trying to see what are the elements in that religion that are universal. Because religions have two elements. There's one part of the religions which are purely local and purely, uh, you know, uh, only confined to the time and place in history. And there are some that are universal and eternal. So can we tease out the universal elements in the various religions and then present them? That is a big task that awaits, still awaits to be done. Our message is really to bring hope to a world that is torn and distracted and fractured and fragmented. And that is an inner hope, basically. What is religion all about? In the final analysis, religion is about trying to get to, to your deepest consciousness. Now, what we really need is we need to organize a mass movement in this direction. And there we need the cooperation a cooperation of people like you, people who are watching this film, a cooperation of philanthropists who, who are giving millions of dollars to universities which are already uh, brimming over with money. Why can't somebody give a million dollars to the interface movement? We need now a commitment to the interface movement. Let there be some people now who are prepared to give their time, their energy, uh, their, their, their support to this movement. We are full of hope. We are not, I know the situation is difficult. And very often, many of my colleagues say, you know, Dr. Karan Singh, what is the use? You see fanaticism is, is taking over the world, but we can't accept that. We have to keep the faith. And by keeping the faith, uh, we can do that through the interface. Ladies and gentlemen and dear friends, it gives me great joy to welcome Honorable Vice President of India, Dr. Muhammad Hamid Ansari Sahab. I'd like to present him this bouquet. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And also a bouquet with the lily, white lily for Sri M, our reverend and esteemed. And now I'd like to invite Honorable Dr. Karan Singh to kindly take us forward. First the national anthem, and then you'll have the welcome. <laughs> Honorable Vice President of India, Janab Hamid Ansari Sahab, Shri M, participants in this historic walk of hope, the Asha Yatra, who have already covered 6,000 kilometers from Kanyakumari, where I flagged it off, and still have another 1,500 kilometers to go to reach Kashmir. Members of the Executive Committee of the Temple of Understanding and our friends and supporters, the representatives of the press and electronic media, and dear friends. A very warm welcome to all of you on the occasion of the Silver Jubilee of the Temple of Understanding, India. This is part, of course, of a worldwide movement known as the Interfaith Movement, which seeks to try and bring together people of different religious denominations in a harmonious dialogue. This began, in a way, in 1893 with the first parliament of the world's religions in Chicago. And uh, uh, that was a great gathering. Uh, and Swami Vivekananda made a dramatic entry there and had a tremendous influence. And I just want to read one sentence from his speech, from his opening speech. 
He said, sectarianism, bigotry, and its horrible descendant, fanaticism, have possessed long this beautiful earth. It has filled the earth with violence, drenched it often and often with human blood, destroyed civilizations, and sent whole nations to despair. Had it not been for this horrible demon, human society would be far more advanced than it is now. Unfortunately, the horrible demon is still alive and kicking. And indeed, in the last few years, it has become a major threat to human civilization itself. And that, I think, lends a peculiar urgency and significance to the interfaith movement. Religion has a mixed record in history. Much that is great and noble in human civilization, art and architecture and literature and dance and music and, and, uh, and the great spiritual texts and so on, can be traced back to one or other of the great religions of the world. On the other hand, more people have probably in history been killed and massacred and blown up and tortured in the name of religion than in any other name. And it is a curious thing, Ansari Sahib, that every religion looks upon its deity as being compassionate. I am a worshipper of Lord Shiva, Karpur Gaurum Karuna Avataram, the avatar of compassion. The Muslims start their prayer, Bismillah, Rahman, or Rahim, the merciful, the beneficent. Christians believe that Lord Jesus mounted the cross to atone for the sins of humanity. Every religion looks upon its particular version of the divine as being compassionate. And yet, these compassionate religions and others have, have created havoc and continue to do so. And therefore, India in particular has a responsibility. This is the land where all the great religions of the world flourish. So we have this great tradition in this country. And we must not let that tradition be trodden underfoot, regardless of who does it. And the interfaith movement, therefore, is based on a single sutra, shall we say, of the, of the uh, Rig Veda, Ekam Sat Vipraha Bahuda Vadanti. The truth is one, the wise call it by many names. It is, it, the religion is the quest for the inner life, the inner light, the light that lighteth every man that cometh into the world, as the, as the Bible says. The nur elahi of the Sufis, the Ekumkar of the Sikh Gurus, the bodhicitta of the Buddhists, and the vision of the seers of the Upanishads when they say, Vedaham etam purusham mahantam aditya varanam tamasap parastat. I have seen that great being shining like a sun beyond the darkness. That is the true purpose of religion, not fighting each other, not destroying each other, not threatening each other. And therefore, the temple of understanding is committed to this, to this interfaith harmony. And uh, we have instituted an Interfaith Harmony Award for the first time in recognition of our Silver Jubilee. And in order to give that award, we could not think of anybody better than Mumtaz Ali Khan, known now, known now around the world as Shri M. A most remarkable man who is undertaking Ansari Sahib a most remarkable trek. He's walked 6,000 kilometers from Kanyakumari, and wherever he's gone on the way, they've had meetings. Every stop, there's a meeting, there's an interfaith meeting, there are kirtans, there are bhajans, there are, there, are, there, are, there are prayers, interfaith prayers, and he's interacted with lakhs and lakhs of people on the way. That is real grassroots work, because sometimes we can talk theory of interfaith, but how do you actually put that into operation. How do you project that onto the ground? And that is what Shri M has done. And we thought there would be no better person than Shri M to be the first recipient of this Interface Harmony Award. And I am also, I'm, I'm very grateful, I'm very grateful to Ansari Sahib, who is a good friend and also my chairman, the Raj Sabha, I don't create any problems for him, other people do. <laughs> uh, grateful to him, I thought that when this uh, award has to be given, we needed somebody of stature, somebody of compassion and understanding to give it. So I would now request uh, the General Secretary of the 
Temple of Understanding to read out the citation, after which uh, the, the award will be presented. But before that, where are the plaques that I have got to give to these? Honorable Vice President of India, Shri Muhammad Hamid Ansari Saab, Honorable Dr. Karan Singh, Reverend and esteemed Shri M, Honorable Dr. B.P. Singh. Here is the citation. Shri M, spiritual guide and social reformer and educationist. His transformational journey from a young boy to a living yogi is best described as a fascinating story symbolized by single-minded discipline and dedication. At the age of nine, his spiritual transformation was initiated by his future master, Maheshwarnath Babaji, who met him under a jackfruit tree in the compound of his house in Thiruvananthapuram. Though only fleeting, this meeting definitely set the stage for their future reunion in the Himalayas. The next decade saw him go through a range of experiences, both material and mystical. At 19, he embarked on his journey to the Himalayas seeking a true master. His fortitude was rewarded by the luminous appearance of his guru, Maheshwarnath Babaji, who initiated him into the Nath tradition. The next three and a half years, he lived and traveled extensively throughout the Himalayas with his master. Traveling extensively unto the present day, he has quietly gone about his life's mission, teaching and guiding people as per his master's instructions. Conversant with teachings of most major religions, Sri M says, go to the core, theories are of no use. In 2011, Sri M wrote his memoir, Apprentice to a Himalayan Master, a Yogi's Autobiography, which became an instant bestseller. He has also written books like Wisdom of the Rishis, The Three Upanishads, Isha Vasya, Keno, Mandukya, then Little Guide to Greater Glory and a Happier Life, Jewel in the Lotus, Deeper Aspects of Hinduism. And over the years, he has worked tirelessly and he established many institutions like the Satsang Vidyale, the People Grove Tree School, the Swastya Kendra, the Manav Ekta Mission, the Sarva Dharma Kendra, and the walk of hope. The walk of hope is an endeavor to restore the innate spirituality of the nation, rekindling true faith and rejuvenating the spirit of hope, love, peace, harmony, and oneness. Sri M's focus has also been on the children and the youth of the country. And I quote, everywhere we go, we try to visit schools and colleges because the youth's minds are still fresh. Since these are the people who will make India great one day, we sow the seeds of peace and harmony in their hearts, which will become a huge, powerful tree one day. There will come a time when all of us Indians will sit under its shade peacefully. When it bears flowers and fruits and the wind blows, the sweet fragrance of Manav Ekta will spread across the world. In view of his yeoman services, we, the Temple of Understanding, are pleased to bestow the first Karan Singh Harmony Interfaith Award on the occasion of the Silver Jubilee celebrations. Thank you. The Honorable Vice President, Sri Hamid Ansari, Janab Hamid Ansari. Dr. Karan Singh, Member of Parliament and the head of this organization, which is the Temple of Understanding. Dr. Merchant, who's a good friend of us, who we have known for some years now. Then Dr. B.P. Singh, Vice President of the Temple of Understanding, 
whose name I had heard for many years, but for the first time I was meeting him. And all the distinguished guests in front of me, ladies and gentlemen, old friends, and those who have been walking with me, to whom I am eternally indebted, Thank you very much, all of you. Dr. Karan Singh has talked. Dr. Marchant has said, so you know the idea of what the walk is all about. I will only have a brief introduction, which is why people call me Shri M. Many people ask me, why do they call you Shri M? Don't you have a name? The reason is that when I was born, my parents named me Mumtaz Ali Khan. We are settlers from the north, of course, in Kerala. And the first letter of Mamtaz is M. Babaji, who was my teacher, although he belonged to the Nath Sampradaya, I don't think he could be fitted into any Sampradaya. He was universal in his outlook. And he called me Madhukarnath, which again is M. M. And then, above all, I love it when I'm called as M, because M is the first letter of Manav or Manushya, if you put it in Sanskrit. So, cutting across religious and other barriers, I am very happy to be called M. When I sign, I don't even add Shri, I'm simply M. Some friends have added the Shri, but I have only one. You know that whenever we have a satsang, when we have a religious gathering, we always say, Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. So what's it that we're looking for? Peace. And when two Muslims meet each other, how do they greet each other? Salam Alaikum. What does that mean? May the peace and well-being of the Supreme Lord be on you. And the reply is the same to you. The Jews, instead of Salam, they say Shalom. It's the same thing. And as far as peace is concerned in the Jain system of thought, you know, Ahimsa, Paramo, Dharma. So you see this everywhere in a sense. Now this is the essence also of Vedanta, that we are one as human beings. We all born from the womb of a mother, we don't fall from heaven. And we go back into this earth, so we are humans. And we are also citizens of this great country, which stays united in spite of 22 languages, so many religions, so many sampradayas, and so on. Unfortunately, here and there it breaks. And that's where we are trying to prevent it. Because when it breaks, it becomes a raging flame. It's difficult to put it off. I think after Kabir, I have somehow taken on the mantle of, please don't misunderstand me, I'm not a rebirth of Kabir. And want to work towards this unity where human beings are looked as human beings. And this country is respected as a nation which is like a gulshan, which is like a garden with many kinds of flowers. Honorable Vice President, before the walk, a few days before, he asked me a very relevant question. He said, after you finish your walk to Kashmir, where will you make your center and start working? He said, all people who have walked have afterwards stopped somewhere and started work. So we also need to do this. And from the response that we have got, which of course with great happiness I must tell you, with thankfulness that the Temple of Understanding and Dr. Karan Singh, though he's so elder, I don't want to call him my friend because it would be like equality. He has consented, the Temple of Understanding has consented to give us this award, it's not mine, it's yours, all you Padyatris, for humanity. Because if I am a Manav and I'm M, you're all M. There's no non-Manav anywhere here. So it's for all. 
and I'm very, very thankful. And because of this, I think we are being encouraged to go further. And I feel that this walk will achieve its purpose at some point or the other. As they say, God willing. Thank you very much. Once again, thanks to the Temple of Understanding. Thank you very much. Dr. Karan Singh Ji, Shri M. the awardee this evening, Dr. Merchant, General Secretary of the Temple of Understanding India, Dr. B.P. Singh, Vice President, Temple of Understanding India, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. This is a joyous happening. We have gathered here to celebrate the conferring of an important award on a distinguished person who has contributed his bit so meaningfully to making our world a better place. I felicitate Shri M and commend the jury for making this choice. Friends, societies are living entities that respond to challenges of changing times. India is no exception to it. In the globalizing world of the 21st century, spaces have shrunk, traditional practices are being eschewed, and new means of communication, apart from the good they bring, also are also fac facilitating the communication of prejudices and mischief. Each of these impedes the effort to understand the other, who may be a neighbor, a fellow citizen, a fellow human being. In November 1995, and pursuant to earlier UN General Assembly resolutions, the General Conference of UNESCO adopted a Declaration of Principles on Tolerance that defined as respect, acceptance, and appreciation of the rich diversity of the world's cultures, our forms of expression, and ways of being human, adding that tolerance is harmony in difference, harmony in difference, and is not concession, contents, or indulgence, and that it is not only a moral duty, but a political and legal requirement for the replacement of the culture of war by a culture of peace. It emphasized that this is to be achieved by action at state, social, and educational levels. Tolerance is thus a virtue to be cultivated. Acceptance, however, goes a step beyond tolerance. It is a person's assent to the reality of a situation, recognizing a process or condition without attempting to change it, protest or exit. It can tolerate something without accepting. You can tolerate something without accepting it, but you cannot accept something without tolerating it. Moving from tolerance to acceptance is a journey that starts within ourselves, within our own understanding and compassion for people who are different from us. We need to challenge ourselves to see beyond the stereotype and preconceptions that prevent us from accepting others. And yet, principles, however lofty and relevant, will remain in the realm of the ideal unless they are accompanied by an implementing methodology. And we have one instance sitting right here. It is here, it is here that dialogue becomes an imperative necessity. It is only through dialogue that misunderstandings are removed and understanding promoted. I commend the effort on the part of all individuals and groups who indulge in this noble venture. Jai Hind.
रिस्पेक्टेड उपराष्ट्रपति जी डॉक्टर करण सिंह जी द गाइड द सोशल रिफॉर्मर एंड द एजुकेशनिस्ट ऑफ द इवनिंग श्री एम डॉक्टर मर्चेंट एंड फ्रेंड्स आई हैव ए सिंपल टास्क टू परफॉर्म दिस इज वन ऑफ दो स्पेशल इवनिंग्स that rarely comes in the life of even a public intellectual or a civil servant or a public leader when you are actuated by a strong desire to make you feel experience something which is intangible that is love something which has kept india going for centuries that is hope which is also the basis of indian democracy and today it is also significant that we have 25 years of the temple of understanding and the temple of understanding led by dr karan singh has chosen to honor a person who has given a new reality to the indian rea re reality which had persisted for centuries and that is that love can unite us that religions must not clash that civilizations don't clash savagery does and then there are ways to lift yourself above that i really feel happy to have been a part of this and i hope that cdm who is the one of the finest expressions of indian civilizational experience will help us generate not only in india but beyond moral and ethical people who will build a much better world for our children grandchildren and their children i thank the honorable vice president for his uh, scholarly address i really have no words to say about sri m who has made himself the physical and the spiritual symbol of what is best in india's culture and civilization and i salute him on behalf of all of you I thank Dr. Karan Singh for leading the Temple of Understanding. And again, understanding is not a temple; it is a temple in heart. It is not a building. And all these together, ladies and gentlemen, let me conclude with a Hindi poem. And one Hindi poet who is well known here, Ram Dhari Singh Dinkar, wrote. रचना तो पूरी हुई जान भी है इसमें पूछूं जो कोई बात मूर्त बतलाएगी लग जाए आग यदि किसी रोज देवालय में तो चौंकेगी या खरी खरी जल जाएगी आई होप श्री एम एंड द टेंपल ऑफ अंडरस्टैंडिंग विल रेज द वॉइस थैंक यू
Tchau.